What's going on everyone? I hope this video finds you well. My name is Jonathan Riddell and today we are going to do something a little different on this channel. Today I will tell you the lessons I've learned since starting my graduate school career and things I think are helpful to hear as you are starting out in graduate school, either in your master's degree or your PhD. Before we jump into it, uh, if you are a newly accepted uh, student waiting to start your master's or your PhD, uh, congratulations, that's very exciting. And if you are thinking of applying this year, I, I wish you luck and I hope you get into uh, the school that you want to. Okay, so uh, so getting started, here here is some context. I am a PhD student at McMaster uh, University uh, studying theoretical physics. I am about to finish up my second year as a PhD student, uh, but I completed a two-year uh, master's degree program prior. So this advice will be limited to my experiences and the experiences I've heard about from others around me at the same school. I think most of the things I'm about to say are pretty general, uh, but some may be particular uh, to theoretical physics or perhaps to universities uh, in Ontario. The first thing that I want to point out might seem obvious at first, uh, but there's something a little bit uh, deeper going on here. And that is that, um, is that this experience that you're about to have in graduate school will be significantly different uh, compared to your experience as an undergraduate student. In undergrad, you are more or less entirely focused on your studies and your courses, completing assignments, uh, getting ready for tests and exams. It's entirely your one focus. Um, I also did research throughout my third and fourth year as an undergrad, but it was generally understood that my courses were more important than my research, and research was sort of thrown to the side every time things got a little bit too busy. The big change now for you will be that you will be asked to split your time between three distinct and disjoint things, courses, research, and being a teaching assistant. Course requirements definitely vary from school to school, and sort of the number of hours um, uh, that you're expected to be a teaching assistant or, or a TA. So if we take my school as an example, we are expected to take four courses over the course of our master's degree um, and two for our PhD. Um, people usually take all of these courses at once during the first year of the degree in question. So on top of these courses, which I found in some cases to be significantly harder uh, than undergraduate courses, and in some cases uh, easier, you're also expected to TA, which you can't really uh, throw to the side. You always need to, to finish your tasks on time and to do research, something that's probably very new, or at least the, uh, the standards and expectations feel like they have gone up since you were um, an undergrad. For me, this transition was actually a little hard. Uh, I, I like to get my research done in sort of uninterrupted uh, sprints so that I can fully immerse myself in research and sort of separate my brain from everything else um, going on outside of it. So I found the constant interruptions to my schedule uh, with all these different expectations to be quite disruptive. This would more or less manifest like having a meeting, a talk, and a, t a tutorial to run on the same day, taking up three of maybe my eight hours of work, and all of these tasks or, or things to do would be awkwardly uh, spaced apart. So I would, re uh, I, would, I would regularly accept meetings or fill out availability forms in a way that was most convenient to others because I didn't really initially value my research time as being busy. So in my mind, I was always free to do things. So after my first year here, uh, I started trying to structure my week so that I had at least two, maybe three weekdays free uh, to focus on research. Uh, research or uh, those days could be thrown at a course if um, perhaps that, that course was getting particularly heavy um, uh, at, at that time. 
This gave me uh, sort of that uninterrupted time to sort of focus on my work and separate uh, the other tasks uh, to, to other days where I could focus on those things on their own. So time management was definitely uh, one of the first lessons uh, that I learned. Um, but it, it's fair to say that everyone is different, uh, so finding what uh, works best for you in time management will definitely be a process, and I highly recommend you keep your eye on that. So the next point that I want to raise is work-life balance. When you aren't taking courses, there is honestly rarely a need to work yourself overtime on weekends or at night. You might be absolutely tempted to get that next plot or maybe that next step in your calculation uh, before your next meeting with your supervisor, um, and perhaps doing that sometimes is fine or feels necessary. But making a habit of not giving yourself time to relax and to remove yourself from the physics for things like hobbies and spending time with other people will honestly eventually burn you out. There is, and perhaps this is controversial, there is absolutely more to life than physics. And counterintuitively, you'll be more productive anyway if you just relax sometimes and remove yourself from the problems that you're stuck on. Research is also never done. It's a grind and there is always something you could be doing. So it's a vicious cycle uh, that you might get caught up in, always wanting to do more, always wanting to work at nights. There's always something to do. Um, there will be people uh, for sure that you will meet who claim that they put many, many more hours into their work than you do. And it might be tempting to follow their example. But I recommend uh, you prioritize your mental health, your happiness, and your work-life balance. And I promise you, I promise you, uh, you won't regret it. It will improve your time doing research and it will improve the quality of your research. Um, for me, what this looks like is on my research days, uh, which right now, because it's the summer, um, uh, that's every single day. I find that I can get, you know, maybe four to five hours of, of productive time in um, every single day, uh, maybe coding, maybe doing analytical work. Um, and the remainder of my eight hour day is sort of taking care of logistical things like like maybe making plots, uh, writing up the calculations I did earlier, um, answering emails, uh, maybe maybe sometimes uh, reading a textbook to add to my uh, background knowledge. But to be honest, by 5 p.m., I'm done, that's it, I need to relax. After 5 p.m., I'm useless. Um, I find that my work just isn't very productive uh, after that point. The point that I wanted to make um, next would be something building off of the fact that uh, research is absolutely a grind, it's a marathon. Getting started in your research takes time and that's okay. Learning what is surprising or unsurprising, what is novel, and uh, what has already been shown in the field will take you time. Most people don't publish in their first few years, and they usually publish closer to the end of their PhD. The, learn the learning curve is simply uh, very steep in research uh, for a lot of fields, and, and that's, that's obviously very normal. So, so research is hard, uh, is sort of the punchline, and that's okay, it's hard for everyone. And especially at the beginning, where you are still being exposed uh, to sort of the concepts uh, in your field, uh, things will feel very hard and perhaps kind of slow. For a lot of people, this might be the first time that they truly experience uh, failure or perhaps being overly stuck on a problem or a concept. But that's research. Uh, the goal is to answer problems other people haven't answered yet. Um, and sometimes this is incredibly difficult and that's okay. And sometimes it's actually just impossible and, and that's also okay and sort of out of your control. Along the same lines as this last point, um, in your early years uh, of your degree, you should really be um, sort of focused and excited on creating a solid foundation for yourself in your area of expertise or, or the area that you're trying to become an expert in. 
reading papers is obviously very hard in the beginning and you will get better at it with time. Some fields have typical textbooks or review papers uh, to, to break you into the field, summarize lingo, and expose you to relevant concepts. Definitely slow down a bit, uh, take time to learn these things. Um, the better your foundation, the easier it will be for you in the future to identify new questions to ask and sort of understand the relevance of your work. So uh, a big thing here, at least in Canada, is um, in, in graduate school that I haven't mentioned yet, is scholarships. In Canada, we have a national competition uh, that requires an application that's also accompanied by a research proposal. You get several uh, sort of times and attempts to apply to these scholarships, uh, and they are indeed competitive, so not everyone gets them. In the beginning, I proposed exactly what I was thinking about and sort of the technical details uh, that I thought were really important and the technical reasons for their importance. So in my proposals, I would talk about things like eigenstate thermalization and many body localization and, and the foundations of statistical mechanics. Uh, you know basically what this channel is about. And I was unsurprisingly rejected. Um, just like when you do presentations, uh, the story and sort of the big picture questions um, and sort of how you yourself and your projects will fit into those things, you know, the story and the big picture questions, those things are more important than the minor details um, that you might be concerned with on a day-to-day -day basis. These minor details are, of course, important to you um, and to other people in your field. Uh, but for conflict of interest reasons, uh, your application will rarely, if ever, uh, for scholarships anyway, be reviewed by people in your field or, or even um, uh, people in any other physics field altogether. Um, so, so make sure to always keep your audience in mind when applying for scholarships or even when you're doing a presentation uh, to, to others. So the last point I wanted to make um, is about the people uh, around you who will share uh, this experience with you in graduate school. So firstly, and perhaps the most important, is your supervisor. Getting on the same page with them is extremely important uh, to, to, to say it mildly. They might have opinions, for example, on which courses you should take and may have uh, particular opinions on how maybe you should approach your work or, or on your uh, sort, of, sort of approach your day to day uh, uh, work life. Understanding your supervisor's expectations and making sure they understand yours will definitely go a long way. Your supervisor unfortunately holds the key to your degree and how fruitful your time uh, in graduate school will be. Uh, so don't be afraid to ask questions about courses, recommendations, and regular old logistical uh, things uh, that affect your degree and your research. Discuss all of those things uh, with your supervisor at relevant and appropriate times. So along with this, your group um, or a group in an adjacent field will often have more senior PhD students. A lot of these people will be very friendly um, and are absolutely a great resource for uh, little things around the department that your supervisor might not be familiar with. They'll have experience, for example, with scholarship applications, uh, courses, and they'll better understand the things that you're going through so, so you can chat with them um, about that because they have recently gone through those things themselves. Uh, they will also often have uh, much more time to explain concepts to you than your supervisor. Um, and from honestly a, a non-research perspective, you know, getting to know other graduate students um, and really embracing the social aspect of being a graduate student um, you know, a lot of a lot of these people will end up becoming your lifelong friends. You know, physics is a social sort of science in the sense that um, you know, collaborating, you know, talking with people on on whiteboards or blackboards, uh, that that's definitely one of the the really fun aspects about physics. You know, sharing this collective experience that you're having with people will will honestly make your uh, your graduate school experience a lot better. 
So that's it for today. Uh, I hope this video was somehow helpful. Um, if you have any questions for me uh, that I didn't answer in this video, I will be, as usual, very active in the comment section. So, so feel free to, to comment below and I'll, and I'll get back to you. Um, if you liked the video, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, uh, have a great day and I wish you all luck.